I was reading an article recently where a church, one of the southern states, was thinking of suing the governor of their prospective state to allow people to gather in larger numbers in their church. And the priest had explained that they simply cannot continue doing Zoom church sessions. They were just losing their memberships. And it really got me thinking about the incredible innovation that I feel is happening for educators all over the place, in Jewish education, in secular education, in non-Jewish education alike. This is a period of innovation. You know, this stands in stark contrast to an incredible, almost fantastical episode that happens in this week's Torah portion in Parshat Balak, a famous story where there's a non-Jewish prophet, Bilam, as powerful as Moses himself, and he's hired by a non-Jewish king, Balak, to curse the Jewish people. And Bilam had certain powers that he was able to do this to a very, very high level and potentially cause incredible damage to the Jewish people. Instead, he ends up blessing them a number of times, but on his way to curse them one of the times, he's riding on his donkey, and the donkey is stopped because the donkey sees in front of the path an angel sent by the Almighty to stop him. And the donkey stops, and, the, and Bilaam, the prophet, riding the donkey, slaps his donkey hard to get it to move. And miraculously, the donkey, the Torah says that the donkey opens his mouth and says, Why are you hitting me? And Bilaam says, responds to him like a normal person, Well, I'm telling you to go. Why aren't you going? And the donkey says, Haven't I always done your bidding? Haven't I taken you anywhere you've ever wanted? And Bilaam says, Yes. And the donkey says, So then why are you hitting me? Perhaps there's a good reason. And then the Almighty reveals the, the angel in front of Bilaam. And the amazing uh, idea that's found in this, in this story, fantastical as it may seem, but true because it's in the Torah, is that there is no element of surprise to Bilaam. He's so consumed by hate, by his own self-interest, that nothing can enter his mind. He can't even notice the fantastic miracle in front of his very eyes of an animal talking to him. A person who is so absorbed and so self-interested, there's no room for them. There's no vacuum left to take in the wonders of the world, to see the hand of God in this incredible display of a miracle happening right in front of our eyes, right in front of His eyes. I think by now, hopefully we're not so jaded by this entire bizarre experience called COVID that we fail to see the wonder, the innovation, that's in, the incredible innovation happening around us, whether it's your kids' teachers, or what's going to have to happen over the summer as we as parents have to become a little bit innovative to keep the kids happy at home or somewhat at home if they're going to some sort of camp. And Walter Isaacson in his fantastic book, The Innovators, identifies a few different traits of the greatest innovators and inventors of the past few centuries. And he notes people like Steve Jobs and Edison, they're very simple. They just had an idea and pursued it and they were passionate about it. Bilaam was passionate about destroying the Jewish people. When your energy is passive in terms of negativity, in terms of positivity, excuse, excuse me, and you just want to destroy, then there's no room for wonder. If you want to build and create like Edison did, like Steve Jobs wanted to do, no matter what their personalities were like, then there's capacity for wonder, for surprise, for innovation, for bold moves. And I encourage you and just like my colleagues and I are encouraging each other, at least in the rabbinic field and in the mental health field, certainly there's incredible innovation in, in technology and in rethinking of all the thought, things that we thought to be true and safe. For example, we always thought that to get someone to become excited about Judaism, uh, the best way to do that is to take them on a trip to Israel. And indeed, this has borne incredible fruits, I can tell you from my own experiences. But that didn't happen, and that's not going to happen this entire summer. And yet people are finding other ways to engage other Jews, and for them to see such beauty in Judaism even in these tough times. So as you're sitting by the dock, by Muskoka or Innisfil, or wherever you may go, as you try to desperately rent a cottage that is not going to be available for Ju July and August, I've already checked, think about some ways where you and your family, and even your children, can be innovative for your own health, to be excited about your own Judaism and to share it with other Jews. Shabbat Shalom.